Do you want to save up to 90% of your coding time? Well, today I'm going to dive deep with 11 tips and tricks of how to write better, cleaner code. Alex here from repeller.com and if you do like this video, go ahead and subscribe to the channel because I would appreciate that. And now let's open up Xcode. So let's dive into these 10 tips that will make you write clean code in iOS. And if you watch this video till the end, you will see that I have an extra bonus tip that is one of my favorites. So let's dive into uh, our tips. But before we do that, let me just remind you about Dev Factory. It's at developer.com slash mentoring. Now, uh, if you do want to meet me, on a 60 minute Zoom call, I may teach you Swift UI or uh, fix a bug in your code. Go ahead and check out rebeloper.com slash mentoring where you can find me on a 16 minute Zoom call. So uh, let's start off why to write clean code. And what I did here for this uh, video is just created a brand new Excel project. And uh, I'm just using the Swift UI template and uh, inside the content view, I just started off with these marks. And um, yeah, you can follow along in a brand new Xcode project if you wish to. Otherwise, make sure that you use all of these tips and tricks inside all of your projects. So why write clean code? And it says saves future time and cost. And that is really, really important. Now, if you want to make a quick and dirty fix on your code base that will do it but on the long run you will not understand what you did uh, let's say after two or three months and that is time spent uh, debugging or understanding what you have written two or three months ago and that is also costly of course now don't focus on writing code that's easy to write meaning that don't do a quick and dirty fix focus on writing code that is easy to read. And yeah, this is so, so important to learn. Of course, this will come with experience and uh, by abiding to these kind of rules, uh, I'm just calling it tips, but you will thank me later when you will be able to read your code better than uh, ever. And of course, other developers will be able to read your code as, as it should be. Okay, tip number one use meaningful names and uh, this is kind of the second part of write code that expresses intent so we are going to cover the first one of this step use meaningful names and then uh, what this express intent means now let's say you want to declare a variable let's just call var and num equals 24 now this is really really bad a bad habit like these shortenings or having these encrypted names for properties make sure that you name them appropriately make sure it's like reading a novel that's how uh, uh, your code should look like so in this case this is no definitely don't do this uh, you want to go let's say a uh, number of profiles equals no nine so this is how you shoot it number of profiles then we know that this variable is instead uh, uh, indeed uh, uh, setting, uh, showing us the number of profiles so that's using meaningful names and this is really really important i have found a lot of code bases which have these encrypted variable names and um, yeah it's it's another extra mile for your brain to kind of figure out what this means but if you just say number of profiles which does say actually what it means then it's much much easier to code then next is write code that expresses intent. Now let's just create a function here. And uh, well, let's just call this request. Okay, now uh, this again should be a no-no because what do we request? Is this actually a verb or is this a noun? So yeah, uh, it's, it's really, really encrypted and we don't really understand what this means. Instead, you should just go and create a function name that actually expresses the intent of the functions like uh, fetch profiles, for example. So this should be yes. So as you can see, fetch profiles is much more readable. Okay, 
That's it for tip number two. Tip number three is single responsibility principle. A function should do one thing well and only. Now, this is really important. I don't have an example for this tutorial right over here, but you most probably encounter this where a function does a lot of things and it has a lot of properties. And most probably, uh, well, the first sign that uh, I see that uh, a function is not handling a simple responsibility is that it has too many properties. Now, too many properties means that there's a variety of outcomes, most probably, which is not a single responsibility. So make sure a function does one thing only and it does it well. Okay, tip number three. Make sure that you use is with bools. Now, this is, uh, this is something that I have found a lot of times in kind of uh, not that good code bases. So let's say that we want to go and check for var expired and that is of type bool and we are just going to set it to false. Okay, this is fine, you might ask, but what if on another part of the code base, and I recommend this out, we are going to have another expired and that would be a date and our current date just so we don't have an error. So as you can see, the one, the first one implies that is it expired or not, true or false. The second one is giving us the expiring date. So expired the date. Now this is really, really bad practice because uh, uh, one developer may think that it's a boolean, the other one may think that it's a date value. So again, make sure that you are using these variable names, uh, like you are giving these variables names correctly. Uh, instead, this should be is expired. So uh, this will be a boolean value. Uh, let's just go for false here. So this is what I mean when to use is with booleans. And uh, uh, the, the second one with the date value, which should represent the date value, it should be var and expiration date, for example, expiration date. Okay, and that's a date, date. And now there's no doubt that is expired is in fact a Boolean and expiration date is a date. So make sure that you adhere to these guidelines. Okay, uh, uh, next up, this is a strange one. Tip number four, do not use double negatives. Now this again, it's going to save you a lot of brain power. So let me just give you the wrong example first. So var and this here comes the double negative is not closed and that is false. Now, as I'm writing this down, I have to go through, is it closed or is not closed? So if it's not closed and it's set to false, then it means that it is open. So again, uh, it's, it's a mess. Now let's do a function for this. So func uh, do something, for example, uh, for the function name. And uh, now let's use this is not closed uh, in an if statement. So if not, is not closed, do something. Okay, now you're screaming at me that you don't really understand. So if it is not, is not closed, then do something. Well, yeah, this, this, is, this is way, way too advanced for my brain. So let's just uncomment this. Don't use double negatives. Instead, this is what you, you should do. Let me just comment all of this. Uh, like copy it out and then comment it in. And uh, instead of is not closed, just go is closed. So this is uh, uh, actually much, much better. Set this to true, meaning that it is closed. And right over here, if is closed, then do something. So this is much, much simpler to understand when you are reading it. Again, I am begging you, do not use double negatives. Next up, Number five, do, don't use comments whenever possible. Now, this is kind of an intriguing one and uh, you might have another opinion. You might want to comment everything there is inside your code. Maybe your boss is asking you to do that, but comments are lies waiting to happen. The code should speak for itself. Comments are lies 
waiting for waiting to happen what does this mean well let's say you commented something out uh, again if the code is not speaking for itself then okay let's just add in a comment what does this function do but let's say another developer just comes in and changes the functionality of that function and it misses to update the document uh, the comment now that comment now becomes a lie so that's what i mean comments are lies waiting to happen and it happens quite a lot now you have to take care of the comments to be updated it takes a lot of time better just write code that should speak for itself and we come back to tip number one where you are going to write code function variable names uh, as uh, reading uh, as, as you would might read the functionality of those okay that's tip number five next up is tip number six nil coalescing or operator now this is kind of a, a cool trick that you want to use uh, in order to save time on on coding and this is especially good uh, well this is of course a swift trick let me just uh, lay out the groundwork here so let's have a name here and that's an empty string and then let's have a variable like my name and that will be a string but this is optional now what if i want to give the name property uh, the value of my name now if you are not using nil coalescing you would do something like this let me just create a function here called rename so we can do this example so right over here you would just go and check if my name is nil or not so if my name is not equals to nil uh, then do something else, uh, do something else. So if this is a not nil, then we can just safely give it to the name property. So my name, and I can just bang that out because I do know that this is in fact not a nil. Otherwise, we are just going to give it uh, not available or non-existent um, string value. Okay, well, this, this is already like uh, five, Four, two three four five lines of code uh, yeah let's not do this let's do this in one line of code so we are grabbing the name and giving it a value now we are giving it the value of my name but if this is optional we are going to use a near coalescing operator and this is two question marks and just give it a value so not available so if my name is nil then just use this default value for example not available really really nice tip number seven ternary operators again this is kind of like this so you just don't want to use the if else statement let me just give you uh, the example and you will better understand it so uh, let's just create a response here the response would be zero and then var message would be an empty string okay so uh, let's create a function called check response check response okay we are going to check for the response now if the response is 200 then the message should be okay otherwise message should be error so yeah if you are not using the turner operator you would do something like this so if uh, response equals to 200 then message equals okay else the message is equals to error okay now this is again okay but a lot of lines of code which you can just omit well not just one there which you can just fix it with one ternary operator one line of ternary operator and that is pretty straightforward we just grab the message so this is what we want to set message equals according to the response so re uh, if the response equals to 200 so this is our if kind of the statement the if uh, the the uh, requirement one question mark and the first element here is if this is true okay and then a colon and then if that statement is false so error and this is the ternary operator here is the uh, if and here is the true and here is the false really really nice okay and of course we are setting 
the value for the message right over here. Great. Tip number eight, eliminate typos. Now, this I use quite a lot on my uh, projects that I'm doing for clients. Uh, I'm just going to assume that many of your apps, we're going to have, let's say, a URL or maybe an API key. So you shouldn't use them in line like a string. You should create these static variables so you don't have typos. And let me just tell you, uh, show you what I mean. So let's create a struct here called uh, setup. Okay. Now inside here, we could just create a static, static let and API key and that is something like one two three four five okay whatever now uh, uh, let's have a function here and do something with api key okay so yeah this is just an you know, uh, encompassing function some thing okay so now I can just simply, for example, let's just print this out setup. I'm just go setup dot. And now you have API key and you don't have any more typos. Now, okay, this is fine. But what if I want to have, let's say another kind of category of uh, setups, for example, URLs, what I was talking about. Let's create another struct inside this struct and that would be URL. And uh, I'm just going to copy out from my notes here, these two, because I don't want to waste time. So here, oh, sorry, not there, but let's just paste it down there. Okay, so these are my two uh, URLs, privacy policy and terms of service. So now, and again, I'm just going to use it right over here. I'm just going to go dot URL and then I can just choose privacy policy or terms of service. Really, really nice. Moving on. Tip number nine, use Mark. Now, this is something that I rarely see in other people's projects, but I highly recommend it and because I do love it. So what does this Mark mean? Well, if you take a look at my current project, now, if I just go right over here, you will see that, oh, this is really nice. It's structures, we can see all of these. We have these uh, dividers and we can see all of those marks. And we did this by having these kind of comments, but uh, you just have here a mark, colon, and a line. Now, if you do want to you have a line before that, you just add in here this, or if you omit it, you won't have only the mark. So let's have here um, a simple, uh, a simple uh, example. So let's see, uh, we are having var property one equals zero, and then we are going to have here two functions maybe, function one and then func function two. Okay, so yeah, this is fine. And But when you are going to have a lot of these properties and functions throughout your code, you might want to categorize them even better. And of course, you see that we are having this line over here. If we just add in here the minimap, you will see that we are having this. This is really, really cool. Okay, so uh, let's just add in here, for example, let's mark these as properties. So mark and properties. Okay, properties, really, really nice. And uh, now you can see that we are having indeed here a properties mark. So these are the properties, really, really nice. But uh, I might want to add in here a line and that will just, I believe I have to just have the minimap on and off to see that. Uh, oh, I just omitted that. Okay, so we are having uh, these properties as the mark. Next up, I want to have a mark right over here, mark, and let's just call these fetching data, whatever, fetching data. Okay, and if you take a look at here, now we are having properties and fetching data. Really, really nice. Okay, so that's about Mark. It's a simple trick that you will uh, really, really enjoy for organizing your code. And finally, number 10, 
extensions. So you do want to use extensions to structure your code. Maybe you are going to move your extension into another file, but they are really, really helpful. So we are in the content view. So let's create an extension for our content view, content view. There we go. And let's say I want to create a title view, uh, which I will use on the content view. So let's create a far and title view so maybe i'm just having these sub uh, sub views uh, inside an extension so it will not bother my main content view so there we go and i'm just going to go text hello maybe and let's just have a font of dot title okay and now i can just go all the way up and uh, right over here instead of hello world i'm just going to go and title view really really nice and this could be tucked away either in an extension like you see it here also you can just move it into another file really really great okay and finally the bonus tip tip number 11 better fun function parameters so let's just let me just write here a simple function so it would be fetch posts so fetch posts okay and uh, we might want to add a count in here and that's an int value and yeah we are going to do some fetching right over there so when you are just going to write this out you are just going to go fetch posts and yeah fetch posts and then you have a count and you would just say free okay this is this is nice but it could be even better it could be even much much readable so let me just uh, give you the first tip uh, and of course this will not work because we are yeah, on the route so uh, let's see if you are always like generally you are fetching like 10 posts then you can just give it a default value and that's just it so now we're just going to go and we have fetch posts and we also have fetch posts with a count if we don't want to have 10 so fetch posts this will fetch 10 uh, for the count really really nice but i want well, well let's just uh, type that out again for fetch post counts and maybe 12 uh, well, this is this is not that readable fetch post count. It's kind of a bump there. So what I want to do is just fetch posts and twelve. So for that, I'm going to have this uh, underline underscore here, and uh, we are going to go fetch posts. And now, when you just select this one, you just want to add in the count and maybe just thirty, and that's just it really really nice let me just comment this out so we don't have that error and that concludes uh, all of the tips that i have for you for writing clean code in ios in swift of course and of course this could be used in swift ui or in ui kit whatever <laughs> it's just the swift language go ahead and uh, go through all of these again make sure that you are using uh, at least nine of them inside your projects so these are the 11 tips and tricks that I use on a daily basis to write manageable and clean code that I will thank myself two months down the road. So if you do like these types of videos, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. And while you are at it, make sure to hit that notification bell to get notified of new videos. New videos like these ones. Go ahead and check them out. They are about Swift UI, Swift in general. And as usual, I will see you in the next one.